What's up everyone? Okay, I'm back to my regular camera. I tried that other camera and it looked bad. Uh, happy Saturday. A couple announcements before we start. We're talking about some Fleetwood Mac today. Um, I have a show here in Atlanta on the 28th of next month. It's my uh, hometown show. You know, it's funny, I mentioned hometown show. I mean, I'm from Rochester, New York, but I've lived here for basically half of my life almost 30 years and we have some special guests and um there's tickets remaining for it um i've got a show on the uh 17th of of uh, october in new york city at the gramercy theater there's some tickets left for that my show in berlin is pretty much sold out there's maybe a few tickets left probably less than 10 tickets if it's not sold out already so um and then I, I've mentioned this before in my other live stream. I may be retiring from from touring, uh, touring. I'm not really touring, right? From doing these live shows, um, it's just it's um, takes so much time away uh, from making videos, which is my favorite thing to do. And then um, um, we have a sale. My uh, Beato bundle is on sale. We're talking about some music theory today when we talk about these songs off rumors. Um, uh, my Beato bundle is my Beato book interactive. All they're all video courses. My Beato ear training, which has a ton of of modules, hundreds of modules to train your ear to be able to hear things and figure out songs, uh, be able to improvise better. Then I have my beginner guitar program, if you've never played before. And I've got my more advanced guitar program, which is my Quick Lessons Pro. But all four of those, they're all licenses you get. They're all video courses, all for 99 bucks total. So I fund the channel uh, and keep doing these interviews. I just came back from New York where I interviewed Kirk Hammett. I saw Metallica, had an amazing time working on getting that interview out. Um, and uh, that's that was absolutely fascinating. Um, so rumors. Let's talk about rumors. Now, I have made a number of videos about rumors. Okay, so I did a What Makes This Song Great on Go Your Own Way. We're going to talk about what the best song off Rumors is, which is one of the best, maybe the best record of the 70s, because it's one of the greatest records ever made. Um, I made a video on Dreams when it was a just enormous hit again. It's their only video that has over a billion views on um, or a billion spins on Spotify. I don't know how many it has on Apple because you can't tell. And um, and then uh, I made a video when Christine McVie died. I made a video with uh, Songbird and You Make Love and Fun were both in the video. So um, so that's four songs off this record. So I'm starting to think of it. I mean, there are no bad songs off here, right? Um, secondhand news, uh, you know, a classic, right? Let's I want you to listen to the difference of the uh, how every song has its own character. You know how records kind of have their own, uh, some records have their own sound, like Back in Black has its own sound, or Boston's first record. This song is, this record is actually really varied. If you listen to this, listen to just to the tonality of, of, of secondhand news, listen. Do you hear that kind of the pluckiness of the bass? Right, it's great. It's a killer song, but it's got a really plucky bass. Now listen to Dreams. Dreams is more of a fat kick drum, much more open, more of a headphone thing, mid-tempo groove, beautiful song. Where 
really stereo. The guitars are kind of moving around and stuff. It, it's a great, great, great sound. Very different from secondhand news. Okay? Sonically, it's, it, it's, a, it's in a complete different universe. Then, never going back again. Listen to stereo field. One of the greatest uh, finger picking parts, right? She broke down, let me in. And then Lindsay's voice presentation, check it out. It's made me see where I've been. Double tracked. This, this is a complete different vibe. Listen. simple production on this really bare bones uh, uh guitar uh, the double tracked vocal has very little in, in effects on it it's, it's a it, different universe then you get into don't stop right very grand right off the bat kind of um it's like a shuffle right Right off the bat, this is one of these songs that from the first chord, if I said, okay, uh, name us, how many songs can you name hearing the first one second of it? By the way, Jack White does a video that you should look at where he names Beatles songs accurately, one second a piece. That's it. They, just, they, played, they played, not even, I don't even think a second, and he just instantly names them. Any Beatles song Jack White can name with one one second, which is pretty amazing. Okay, but listen, listen to the first chord. Listen right here. Come on, tell me you don't know right there that that's Don't Stop. That's all you need to hear. One chord, listen. You don't even have to hear the second chord. You just hear the strings, you hear that piano chord. It's really grand sounding. Incredible vocal performance on this song too. This is a, a has a, a killer chorus. is that it has a chorus with a tag. The tag is yesterday's gone, yesterday's gone, that goes into a the kind of a, a boogie woogie feel on it. Dun, 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 right? So that is a uh, kind of a classic uh, chorus that is a chorus with a tag at the end of it, which I love about that song. Amazing song. Let me go back to Dreams just for one second because I... Um, um, I had this in one of my videos when Mary Spender was here. We did this. This is in my greatest two chord songs of all time. Now, some people said there's a third chord that happens in the bridge. Okay. Um, yeah. But this is uh, an amazing, the, the, but basically it's a two, two chord song, Dreams. Unbelievable. Okay. Uh, and then we have this. Oh. Loving you isn't the right thing to do. And how can I ever oh. change things that I feel? Okay. One of the most amazing drum parts, beautiful guitar part. Um, right? Uh, um. Now, when I did my breakdown by what makes a song great on this, I talked about, and it was blocked for years. And it got then it got demonetized. It just got unblocked and everything. It was one of the early ones that I did. It's the first one that ever got blocked. It was it, it was the only blocked song on my channel. There are no blocked songs on out of my 1,200 videos. None are blocked. This was the last one. This was the only what makes a song great that got blocked. 
Um, and I explain on this song, this is to me, I think my second, I think it's the second strongest song on the record. Okay, I'm already giving it up. Um, and the most amazing thing about this to me is the verse. The chorus is phenomenal. It's a killer chorus. But when he goes, I'm loving you, is it the right? And he goes up to that, right? When he goes to that note, that's the fourth against that, this is really an F major chord, okay? When he sings that dissonance, it grabs your ear. This is why it's important to know these things. These are songwriting techniques that you hear me talk about over and over and over. When I interviewed Sting, I called it, I said, upper extension, then I said, haunting tone and he sting was still listening then i said surprise note boom a light went off and sting said i like the way that you use the word surprise uh these dissonant notes here are what gives that song it gives the verse power listen to when he goes is it the right when he hits that note listen i missed it here we go it's a dissonance against the chord. Listen. Loving you right here. Is the right thing oh, to do. But how can I ever change things that I feel? Does it again. Here we go. If I could. Here. Maybe I'd give you my word. I, I get chills every time I hear that. Doesn't matter. I've heard that song a million times but when he does that 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 wow and it's just amazing amazing and the the drum the the drum part in this if you compare this to secondhand news the, the drum sound listen just listen to the drums we're we're talking about production we're talking about music theory. The theory part of this is very important though. Being able to recognize when it goes to, you know, it's like, why does that melody sound so good? I always, I'm just one of these people that as a kid, I was like, why, did, why does that note give me chills? Loving you, is it the right thing to do? Na, na, na. Kind of thing, da, 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 da. Why, though? Why are those notes important? Why is it important to know what those notes even are? Because it will make you, first of all, it'll teach you how to hear things. When you hear this, to know that that's a sus2 chord, okay? This is what my ear training course and my Beato theory interactive, music theory interactive course, these teaches you the theory to this stuff. Why are these things, why do they actually uh, have impact on, on people? And it, it, is, um, it is not, there's no mystery in this. There, there, you can point to these things. This is what makes people uh, uh, like these things and want to come back to hear them. People want to hear dissonances. Vernon says, Rick, this just convinced me. I'm learning ear training. Is this included in your bundle? Want to recognize this stuff? Vernon, this is in my ear training bundle. So I said at the beginning, so that, so my ear training course, my um, Beato Book Interactive, my beginner guitar course, and my um, my uh, Quick Lessons Pro are all 99 bucks. Most people sell their courses. I always say this. Most people sell their courses for like 150 bucks for one. I sell all four for uh, for 99 bucks. And they're, they're just license codes that you get. You go in and they're all video courses. They have... They have um, uh, with downloadable things with them and everything, but they're they're um, they're video courses with with video lectures and things like that, and there are tons of de demonstrations. And the ear training course has hundreds of modules, so that when you hear these things, you're like, oh, I know what that is. Oh, I know what that is. Oh, that's a, that's a that's a sus two chord. That's this. That's that. It, that's a one four five. You get, learn to recognize progressions. All these things. It's important to do that so you can learn how to play songs. 
ultimately, that's what you want to learn how to do. You want to learn how to play songs. You want to learn how to improvise, okay? Um, okay, so, uh, but I have, a, I have a saying about dissonances. Dissonance equals emotion. As a matter of fact, I made a video a long time ago. You can look it up on my channel. I want to say it's called dissonance equals emotion. I don't know, but look it up. It's funny because it's made, it was like seven years old. I think I was at the park down the street making it. Some of it was done. And I think that I, and I explain what I mean because dissonant notes or surprise tones or haunting tones, as I call them to, to sting, these things that just grab your ear and all the songs that you love use these things. Okay, Songbird, I talked about this on my Christine McVie thing. I love this. This is absolutely stunningly beautiful song. Um, you make love fun. This has the clab in there. Come on, okay, so you hear Lindsay's guitar in the right speaker? This is headphone music. Listen to this. Huge space in the melody. And then. You make me happy with the things you chills. Wow. Space. Space. Christine McPhee, amazing. And then. Okay, this may be as good, this may be as good as Go Your Own Way. Two totally different vibes, these two songs. Totally different vibes. One of the best songs on here. Um, uh, oh Daddy. Of Total Vibe Song. Listen to that. Listen. Oh Daddy. You know you make me cry How can you love me? I, I don't love understand why There's so many songs oh, in, in um, There's so many songs in D minor on this record we, What do we know about D minor? Let's see it in the comments here The saddest key ever Right? Um, that is a beautiful song. Daddy, if I can make you see if there's been a fool around, oh, it's got to be me. Come on, man. Yes, it's got to be me. The saddest of all keys. Mr. Boz, 1968. That was the exact quote. The saddest of all keys. That's right. It's the saddest key. It is. Uh, Gold Dust Woman. The, the reverb tail on that note, that's put in after we're, you're right, that's that's a mixing thing right there. Listen, right there, right? The trailing reverb tail. Listen. Oh, listen again, listen. Right here. Oh. Come on. That's unbelievable, right? These are the things, you, this is why records used to be, um, when I was a kid and I wasn't distracted by anything else other than the music, um, I would just sit there and listen over and over and over. And 
I was uh, talking to Aaron, who's in the comments here earlier, and and he says, were you, re were, you was, were you really big into Fleetwood Mac? And I said, I was so into Fleetwood Mac that Lindsey Buckingham on the cover, uh, on the inside sleeve is playing this guitar. And this is not a green screen, right? This isn't the exact guitar that Lindsey Buckingham played. But I played, when I was in high school, I, from, from working at a grocery store, I saved up the money to buy a white Les Paul custom like Lindsey Buckingham is playing on the sleeve of Rumors because he looked amazing and it looked incredible. And he had his beard and his afro. Oh, he was ridiculous. Here you go, Tom. Um, so uh, that is, I just love that when I uh, forget. Okay. Now I left something off here. To me, this is the finest song. On um, th this is the finest song on the record, I think. I think this is the only song written by the whole band. is great about this the harmony vocals the, the 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 swampy feel of the dobro guitar everything and you know what's weird this was not a single but it's the second most played song on spotify of of uh, fleetwood mac why because it's amazing is why it's an incredibly great song um and um, it's, first of all, the, 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 I just love the arrangement of it, the way that those guitars kind of play off each other. I love the, the, the harmony vocals. I love the arrangement of it. The, uh, the, the way that the, um, when, And then I love Mick Fleetwood's uh, um, what I call caveman fills. Okay, this is kind of where I got. So I always said, I always used this term early in my channel. I don't I haven't used it a lot lately. Um, where I call caveman fills or right? A caveman uh, would be any anything. And I'm a massive fan of caveman fills. If they're right. They don't get in the way of everything. They make the drums sound huge. When in doubt, either just play da 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 uh, or play da 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 or play da da do 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 do. Those are like no overplaying. Who said that? Broken Prophet said no overplaying at all. Exactly, exactly. That's really really amazing. Um. So, uh. So back. 20 some odd years ago, I did a cover of this for fun with my buddy, Jason. Now, Jason, uh, for those of you that come to, to my show in Atlanta, if any of you want to travel down here, I'm pretty sure we're going to do a billionaire reunion, by the way. Um, I probably shouldn't have said that, uh, but we're actually going to rehearse uh, coming up here soon. 
Uh, but my buddy Jason's going to be on the show. He's going to come up there and sing. He's in one of my biggest videos. He sings when we did the uh, arena rock so songs. It's one of my biggest videos. Jason sings all these different styles of songs. So he, we did this version of The Chain, like a rock version. I was like, let's do a rock version of The Chain, kind of with heavy guitars, right? And um, and with, uh, with Carmen, who was a singer of the band I-9. So I brought him in and, um, and we just made this in a few hours or so. I never played this before, but I think I found it on the drive before this. And I was like, I'll play this here. I think it's pretty cool. Check this out. So it's me playing everything. And um, I think that, that uh, yeah, Darren from, my, from Billionaire, he plays drums on it, but it was just a kind of a thrown together thing. So I, I always thought it was cool, like, um, I uh, went to this chord. I just love that. So you're like F, sus2. C, uh, C over E, C, uh, C, sus, C5 over E. I thought, I thought, what if we go in the chorus? Um, uh, you know, you know. I just thought that was a cool. I thought that was kind of a cool, um, a cool change for that. That's one of those things when it's like, let's um, let's try some. I I had actually just met Carmen from I Nine, and I was working on on recording with Jason. I was like, oh, let's get Carmen to come up and sing on this. So he, she just, I threw this together, and um, and her and Jason sang it together. So um, so. This entire record, though, I thought about this. I was like, what am I going to do? Thank you, John. I really appreciate that. Wow. 
That's so nice. I thought I was thinking like, am I going to call this this the stream? The um, I thought about is this the greatest record of the '70s? It's one of them. It's definitely one of them. Maybe the best record of the '70s. There's a lot of great records of the '70s. Uh, but this is this entire record, every single song is unbelievable. Somebody says rumors in Boston. No, they came out a year apart. Boston first record, 76, it came out in 77. You know, this was this was a big album. These records that came out right when I started playing, you know, uh, I mean, it, look. I started out learning Jimi Hendrix. Then I then I was learning songs that came out from Night at the Opera had just come out. Frampton Comes Alive had just come out. Boston's first record had just come out. Um, you, you know, Steely Dan, a, a Royal Scam came out. Uh, rumors came out. So I was, Leonard Skinner, these were all the things that I was learning. Zeppelin. Uh, you know, I was learning that whole catalog. I was just going one song to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. There's so many great songs, songs in the key of life. There are so many great records, full records in the 70s. Freddie, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Appreciate that. So many great records in the 70s that it's really hard to say this is the best record. But you got to put rumors. Is uh, That's on the wood. That's that's. You know, that's in one, that's in the top five. If not, I'm just saying, you know, you got Queen, you got Pink Floyd, you got, geez, you know, it's, it's tough, man. It's tough. It was, that was a, uh, you know, I just interviewed Bjorn from ABBA. They made some great records, right? We talk, I made a video that made some amazing records. I made a video on the year 1978, Van Halen 1, The Police first record, Dire Straits first record. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's just so many big records came out in the 70s, right? Um, yes. Uh, yeah. Right. I'm, I'm there. Everybody's putting all these in there. Anyhow. Something to think about, right? Uh, you know, what, what, what is the greatest record of the 70s? Uh, I'm going to put out a poll. I'm going to do that. You guys ever fill out polls on, when you do them on, uh, on the thing? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a poll on that. I'd love to hear your, your greatest songs of the decade. I wonder if, how we can do that. I'm going to figure out a way to do that. I'll post it in here. Um, so... Anyhow, let me just uh, reiterate, while everybody's on here, I have a show here in Atlanta on the 28th of next month. Uh, and um, if you're going to travel to a show, that's the one show that's going to be different than any of the other ones. I have only have three shows left. My show in Berlin is pretty much sold out. I have a show on October 17th in New York City um, at the Gramercy Theater. And then that's pretty much it for me, um, for my live show career. Um, I love doing them, but, um, anyhow, and I'm running the sale through the weekend of my Beato bundle. So all my, my video courses for 99 bucks, that's how I fund the channel. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm able to do these interviews. I don't have any sponsors or anything. My sponsors are when I make a, when I talk about my courses, I sell on here. Those are my sponsors. I make courses to make you better musicians and to learn about all the things that I've discussed on my channel for my 1200, 1300, I might be near 1300 videos over the last seven years. But I, I mentioned a video earlier on dissonance equals emotion. I want to say that was a, I know that was on a thumbnail at least. If you want to see what my early videos looked like, um, somebody said hemispheres. I say farewell to Kings 2112. My God, it's really too hard to uh, really too hard to do that. But you got to you got to think that rumors is way, way up there. OK, that's all. You guys are amazing. Check out my uh, interview with Bjorn from ABBA. 
Um, and uh, I have my Kirk Hammett video coming out probably this week. So have a great rest of your weekend, you guys. We'll see you later. Go to my store, Beato Bundle. See ya.